Hey guys, it's Milmo here and welcome back for some more Walking Dead Road to Survival. Now this is just going to be a quick tutorial on the new scavenger camps and how to run missions. Basically, I made a few mistakes in the first video and my first few missions and I've soon learned from them. So I'm just going to give you guys a heads up on a few little things and hopefully help you out with what the scavenger camps are and how they work. Now we just the first thing I want to start with is your XP here. So as you can see I've got 16 and a half XP. Now XP doesn't mean you get 16 and a half per player. It's actually split between all the players. So whenever you see XP written up there, that XP is split between how many players you're going to take in. So if you take five, it'll be split between five. If you take four, like here, four, three, two, one, so on. So just be wary of that. It's not per player, it's just per the whole team. Now, um, also I'm going to talk about challenge bonuses and other things, but just with the XP also, make sure you're not sending in um, maxed out tiered players, so tier 1, tier, tier 3, tier 4, etc. If they're maxed out on that tier, don't send them in because you will lose your XP. They can't actually gain XP. So just with the converting, the converting cost is pretty much the same whether you convert in a scavenger camp back to the material post or a material post back to as a scavenger camp. You can obviously run more than one. I'm only running one at the moment. Um, I'll tell you my reasonings for that. Obviously, just here, as you can see, there's the food and the time to upgrade it. Um, now, we just go into the mission list here. We've got a few different missions I'm liking, these two in particular. Um, but I'm just going to explain how to make sure you're succeeding in these missions and make sure you're not getting 8 hours or 20 hours in and then failing. So that's making sure you're filling in these challenge requirements but also the team grade. Both are very important and I'll explain why in a few secs. So firstly, We've got our challenge requirements just here. So challenge requirements um, help you get challenge the challenge bonuses and different things. Now before you saw the challenge bonus was six and a half XP and also twenty coins. So that's where you want to fill in these challenge requirements. Now if you don't, it also gives you in most missions plus thirty five percent success rate, which is what you want. You want to make sure you're passing the English students because some of them are one day, two days in. You do not want to be getting a day into a mission and then failing because you're not fulfilling these requirements, um, both team grade and also these. So that plus 35% is really valuable. So what we're going to do here, the challenge requirements can be based on traits but also persona. So right here we're going to have three soldiers, one leader. So we're going to fill these up. Um, because this is an XP mission, you don't want to take in any players that are maxed out. So as you can see, none of these players are maxed out on any tier. So that's why I brought them in and I had to keep changing because players that are maxed out on tiers won't get that XP. Now, as you can see, plus 35% success rate is what I get with them challenge requirements being met. And I've got a guaranteed down the bottom success rate. And that is because I've got the B++ team grade and also... Re and also meeting the challenge requirements. So they're both good. That's the green tick both ways. You want to make sure you meet them requirements but also the team grade. I know people go on that team grade doesn't matter. I've heard a few people say that it doesn't matter. It actually does matter. As you can see here, you take one away, team grade's B+, plus. you go to success rate of high. Just keep going, your team grade goes lower, you go moderately high and the more you keep going and taking them away and the team grade going lower, the lower your chances of success rate will get. Even with a high success rate, you can still fail a mission 20 hours in, 2 hours in, a day and a half in. You can still say, fail that mission. So that's why it's not only important to be filling these challenge requirements, but more importantly, your team grade. Your team grade is more crucial than your challenge requirements. Challenge requirements get you bonuses, the challenge bonuses, but it doesn't get you the success rate down here. It can give you the plus 35% success rate, but it's not going to give you that guarantee like the team grade will down here. So you can have a high success rate, get that plus 35% and actually pass the mission or you cannot. You will literally get 8 hours in and it will fail. I've had a few people that have told me they've got 20 hours in and it has failed. 
So you want to make sure that success rate is at guaranteed. You want it at guaranteed. You want your team grade met and either guaranteed and you want your challenge requirements met. So you're getting the plus 35% success if that's what it's offering. You can also get time reductions, coins, bonus XPs. You want to be making sure you're getting them bonuses but also have that success rate at guaranteed because if you don't have it at guaranteed, uh, you can very well get well into that mission and not now when you're clicking on these eyes It actually tells you the challenge bonuses. So whether it's success rate um, coins XP and it tells you the requirements so you Give you a brief view of whether you have the right characters to actually meet them requirements now the success rate is pretty common in the majority of them, but you can also get other bonuses um, but just to clarify with the XP again, that goes for the whole of your players and make sure you're not sending in max t If you can't level up a player on that tier, then don't send it in because you're just wasting it, um, that XP. Send in a player that can actually go get leveled up and use that XP rather than people that are maxed out. I made that mistake in my first mission. Don't do the same. So um, the reason I only have the one scavenger camp is because I have a lot of my buildings at level 18, 15, 16, I need a lot of wood still, um, and the scavenger camps at the moment ain't offering me the um, same quantity and obviously quality prizes that I feel I can give away all four of my camps. Um, as you can see here, a lot of wood still needed to upgrade my buildings, so that's why I'm still keeping them. But if you want to run more than one scavenger camp in tandem, make sure your roster is actually big enough to be able to run that and not limit your play ass ability um, and things like that for war and all that. But also make sure you're not losing out on your wood. Um, because that can be very, that's very crucial when upgrading builds, especially if you want to go to level 20 town hall. That is a very solid amount of wood over a million wood. So just make sure that. Now, I would definitely recommend at the moment only running two on two, but you can run all four if you feel comfortable. Now, just with the only running the one, just be wary of your expiry times and make sure you're doing missions in accordance to them expiry so if a mission takes a day and a half to do and it's only got a day left and then you've got one that takes two do that one with close to expiry first and then get on to the last one just make sure your timing's right